What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to professionally test our Python code using mock objects. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about mock objects in this video today. And a mock object is essentially a simulated object that mimics the behavior of some other real object, for example, an API, a database, uh, a mail server, something like that. And the idea behind using mock objects is that when testing our code, we don't want to actually test the functionality of an external API of a database of some mail server, we want to test the functionality of our code. So for example, we might have a procedure where we send a request to an API, we get a response, we process this response, we do something with it, and then we want to see if this process works properly. Now in this process, this external API that we're depending on might fail, it might be unavailable, it might have a bug for a couple of days, it might produce some problems. And we don't want to actually test the functionality of this API. And we also don't want to have to rely on this API to see if our code functions properly. So what we can do in this case is we can create mock objects that mimic the behavior of the API. So we can send requests to this mock object, and the mock object will actually return what the API should return in this case, but we don't have to actually send any API requests. And of course, this can also be useful in general when you just don't want to send real requests while testing. So for example, when testing a mail server, uh, or when testing a functionality that uses a mail server, you don't want to actually constantly send emails to actual people, you want to test the process of sending emails, because you're going to assume that the mail server works anyways, this is not your code, you're not going to test Microsoft's uh, Office 365 Outlook server, for example, you want to test if your functionality if your code actually does the right things. So this is the idea behind mock objects and mock testing, and we can use these structures uh, in core Python. So I think from version 3.3 onwards, we have this mock object in the unit test module, which is core Python. And before that, we had to install uh, a package called mock. But since I'm using right now Python 3.10, we're going to import it directly from core Python. And we're going to start with a simple API example. So I'm going to import requests, by the way, request is not a core Python package. So if you want to install it, you have to say pip three install requests. By the way, I'm working on a new keyboard right now, I have the US keyboard layout now, even though I live in Europe. So I might mistype a little bit more often than usual. So I have to kind of get used to the keys here. So we're going to then import unit test itself. And then we're going to also import unit test dot mock. Those are going to be the packages that we use. And now the test case is going to be extremely trivial, we're just going to have a function that makes an API call, gets a response and then returns the JSON object, nothing more than that very simple. Uh, we're going to call this function get underscore user underscore data. Uh, and it's going to have a user ID parameter here. And again, all it does is it basically sends a request a get request to some API, I'm going to just uh, make up some endpoint right now, HTTPS, uh, slash slash, and then uh, API dot example, com, I don't know if that API exists. And then we're going to say users, and then slash, and then we're going to use curly brackets here to say, user ID. So this is an actual API call, this is our actual function, we're not mocking anything here. This is our actual production function that we would use in our code. And this function actually sends a request to this API example.com. And it does the actual work. And then what it does is it returns in our case, very simple, as I said, this is going to give us a response. Uh, and a response is going to have a JSON format, and we're going to return that this is our function. And you can imagine this to be some functionality, making an API call processing the data and so on, in our case, just returning a JSON object. Now, what we can do now is we can create a test class. So we can say test user data, for example. And we're going to pass here uh, as a class as a parent class, unit test dot test case, this is now not mocking, this is just basic testing here. And we're going to define a function that we're going to call test get user data. And this function should call the function the get user data function, but it should call it in a specific way. First of all, the request itself, we want to examine the request itself. 
um, and we want to also get the response, we want to mimic the response that we get. So what we're going to do here, first of all, is we're going to pass a parameter. And this parameter is going to be called mock underscore get. Now you can call this whatever you want, you don't have to call it mock underscore get, I call it mock underscore get. And then we're going to add a decorator up here, the patch decorator. And by the way, I did the imports uh, incorrectly, what we need to do here is we need to say from unit test dot mock, want to import patch and mock mock with a capital M patch with a lowercase p. Um, and we want to patch uh, a certain function, or yeah, a certain function in this case, and this function is requests dot get. Now the idea behind this patch is that when you pass this string here, every occurrence, every call of request that get will be mocked. So this also uh, involves all the functions being called inside of that function. So if I call here, get user data with ID 12, for example, the request that get call in this function inside of this function here will be mocked. So it's not actually performing this call, we now have a mock object that we can use to to uh, and analyze the behavior of this request function here. So uh, that's the idea behind that. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to mock the response. So we're going to say mock response here is going to be equal to mock. This is now an instance of the mock class, which is very flexible. So we're going to just assume now that the response dictionary, we're going to just artificially create a response dictionary. Uh, and this response dictionary will have some data. It will have uh, a name, let's say the name of the user is in this case, uh, John, and we have some other data about the user. So for example, an email address, the email address is going to be john uh, at example.com. And um, this is what our mock object will return. So this is what our uh, function, our request here will return as a response. In our test case, we're just going to assume that this is it. Remember, what we're interested in is analyzing our function, even though in this case, the example is a little bit abstract, because we're not doing anything. We're not interested in testing this line here, we're not interested in testing the API call, we're interested in testing whatever comes after that and before that. So we're going to just say now artificially, this is what the API call will return. And we do that by saying mock response dot JSON dot return value. Okay, what happened now dot return underscore value mock response JSON return value is going to be equal to the response dictionary. So we artificially say our response will have this dictionary as a JSON response. This is what we want to artificially create here. And then we're going to say mock underscore get, which is our parameter that is patched with requests of get here, we want to say that the return value, why is PyCharm automatically turning return into return, return value equals mock response. So the return value of our request is going to be uh, this mock object here, which has this as a JSON return value. And now we can just go ahead and say user data equals and we can say get user data, for example, one. And now we can uh, assert something we can assert, for example, that uh, a certain URL is called. So in our case, we want to make sure that if we pass one here, that this URL with one has been called. So I can copy this here. And I can say that uh, for the mock get so for the request get function, I want to assert that it has been called with so assert called underscore with, I want to assert that it was called uh, with the following string. And the string is HTTPS example and not user ID, but one. So I want to make sure okay, when I call it with a one, this is actually the URL being called, I want to make sure that this is the case, even though again, we don't make the actual API call, we pass the actual parameter. And we want to be sure that this is the result of this string uh, that we format up here. And then we want to also say, for example, self dot assert equal, we want to make sure that something is the case that the user data that we get as a response from this object here, or for the, from this function here, is actually the response dictionary. And in our case, this is of course going to be true. 
And then we can say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore actually in quotation marks, underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we're going to say unit test dot main. Uh, what's the problem here? Oh, of course, there you go. So you can see test. Okay, now if I change this to two, it should fail because it's not calling this URL. You can see that we have a difference in what we expect and what we get. So this works. This is how you can test a request with a mock object. Now, let us move on to a second example, we want to do the same thing with an email client. So this is again, very simple, we have here an API call, we just analyze how the function is being called and what the return value is. Now let us uh, try something else, we're going to import a couple of packages import SMTP lib, we're going to import uh, email or actually from email dot uh, mime dot multi part, we're going to import this class here and then from email mime dot text, we're going to import my text. And uh, then we also want to import here uh, any as a cap, uh, all in uppercase, all in capital letters. And we're going to define a simple function sent underscore email. And this function takes the parameters uh, SMTP underscore server, SMTP underscore port, then we have a uh, a from address, and we have a to address, and we have, of course, a subject and a body. Um, yeah, and what we want to make sure here now is that the email is sent properly without actually using a mail server without actually sending an email. So we're going to say here message equals my multi part, and then we're going to say message from uh, is going to be from address, and then we're going to say message, message two is going to be to address, and then we're going to say message subject is going to be equal to subject. And then we're going to say message uh, dot attach, even though you could also just do it in a different way. But we could also say message attach mime text and we want to have the body. And we want to have the type being plain text. So this is constructing the message and then we want to say server equals SMTP lib dot SMTP. Uh, want to pass the SMTP server, we want to pass the respective SMTP port that was passed as a parameter here, we want to start TLS. Uh, so server dot start TLS, we want to say server dot login, and now we're going to use the from address as a login, and we're going to say here, uh, my password is going to be the password, this is something that we're also going to check for in a second here. Um, text equals message dot s string. And then we want to say server dot send mail. And we want to say from address to address text. And finally, server dot quit. This is our function here. Now this function, again, is an actual function that we would use in production. This is not some mock function. This is something that when you call it when you just call it in your code, will actually send the email if you pass a proper server port and if you have the correct password and the correct email here. This is not a mock uh, function, this does the actual thing. But we can mock it, we can mock certain aspects of it so that we can test it without actually accessing the SMTP server without actually logging in and without actually sending the email. And we do that by saying, for example, test email as a class here will extend again from or inherit again from unit test test case. And we're going to say, here, the function is going to be test underscore sent underscore mail. And here again, we want to have uh, a parameter and this parameter will be the mock SMTP server. So mock SMTP. And we're going to patch this, we're going to say patch. And what we want to patch is SMTP lib dot SMTP, meaning again, when SMTP lib dot SMTP is called. So when we use this constructor here, 
this is going to be mocked. This is not going to actually log into an SMTP server with a port or connect to an SMTP server with a port. This is going to actually be mocked. We're going to have a mock object representing this. Um, and what we want to do here is want to say instance equals uh, SMTP or mock SMTP dot return value. Um, and this basically, uh, basically means that we're mocking the resulting connection. So this year marks the, uh, the SMTP connection, or we replace the actual SMTP connection this year, uh, mocks all respond, uh, all functions being called. So we're going to say instance equals that we're going to say sent, sorry, sent underscore email, and we're going to pass here some SMTP server, for example, uh, SMTP dot example dot com with a certain port 587 for SMTP usually. Uh, and of course, we need some more stuff we need to say that I want to send from my mail at example dot com to his mail at example dot com. Now let me just move the code a little bit. So I'm not blocking it with my camera. And then we're going to say we want to have some subject, I'm going to just say subject, and I'm going to just say, mail content. Um, yeah, so that's the line that we want to call this is the function call. And what we want to do now is we want to analyze how the function call happened. Because again, remember, I'm repeating myself here. But remember, what we're trying to do here is not trying to test whether the SMTP server works, whether the connection to the SMTP server works, we know that it does, or we assume that it does. We want to know if our process around it works, if the function has been called correctly, if the parameters have been passed correctly, if everything has been done correctly, we're not interested in actual uh, in the actual testing of the connection to the SMTP server, this can be done separately if we want to, but this is not what we would use mock testing for. So we can say now mock SMTP assert that it has been called with so assert underscore called underscore with want to assert that it was called with the parameters SMTP dot uh, example dot com in port 587. So this line basically says, okay, uh, we're mocking the whole thing, but we want to make sure that we're actually connecting to the correct server with a correct port. Uh, because if you change something in your code, because you doing some experimentation, some stuff, and you run this test, and you maybe use some other SMTP server, because you're playing around, this test will show you that you're not actually using the proper SMTP server. Uh, and then we're going to say instance, which is again, our return value from the mock SMTP here, we're going to call the sub functions here. So start TLS login, send mail and quit. And we're going to assert certain things about them. So we want to say, start TLS, we want to assert that it was called with nothing. So assert that it was called essentially. And then we're going to do the same thing here for the login here, we want to assert that it was called with the correct credentials. So we want to say, okay, it has to be called with my mail at example.com with the correct password, which is my password, my password like this. And instance dot uh, sent mail, want to make sure that this is called now let me just copy this a couple of times here. Want to assert Come on, this is the new keyboard sent mail assert that it was called with my mail and then his mail at example.com and then uh, with the text. So basically, what the text is doesn't really matter. So we're going to say any this is what we imported this for this is what we imported any for saying, okay, we want to call it with those um, sender and target emails, source and destination mails from two mails. Uh, and the text doesn't matter. So whatever is the text, this is not part of the text uh, test necessarily, we don't want to assert a certain text, We want to say, okay, this has to be the case, but we don't care about the actual content of what is being sent. Um, and then finally, we want to say, quit has to be called as well, without parameters. Uh, but this has to be the case. And then finally, again, we say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals, and then underscore underscore main underscore underscore, if that is the case. So if we're not importing, but we're actually running call the main test. And again, I'm using just one equation uh, equal sign here. 
Uh, and you can see the test runs because everything is done properly. Again, if I change something like the password to something else here, you can see we fail because not the correct password was called. Yeah. So you can see the value of this. Hopefully, those were quite abstract examples. But the idea again is that you have um, that you have certain objects that you don't have to really call, you don't have to really call the API, you don't have to really connect to the database and execute statements, you don't have to really send emails to actual uh, recipients, you can just mock the behavior, you're going to create this, these mock objects that behave exactly like the mail server should behave, like the database should behave and like the API should behave, but you're not actually dependent on the actual objects. And you're also not sending actual requests, which, which can sometimes take more time, you're assuming that they do their job properly, and you're testing the code that interacts with those objects. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And Bye.